Good morning from Sicily and we are in beautiful Palermo. Look behind me at these old beautiful houses and palazzos and we have an Airbnb here directly in the old part of the town and it's a beautiful area of the city because there are many bars and restaurants etc. And this morning we were thinking ah, we can sleep in <laughs> nice and long. Hmm. But at 7.30 this morning they decided to do this in front of our house yeah they're they're making a new pipe and they removed the ground and they stapled it before our in front of our door so we have a question how will we get out from the house and this airbnb where we are used to be an old palazzo you can see the courtyard down there and they put just new apartments here inside but some parts are still the old original parts like this one here for example in the staircase and some have been renewed so let's see how we can get out of here <laughs> So I asked the, the workers, when it, will it be ready, the street? So they said, oggi, oggi o mañana, today, today or tomorrow. We are here in the Calza district, which is really in the city center with these narrow streets. And after the coffee, we are heading to the Ballaro market to see some local produce. We are in the Ballaro market now in Palermo town, and this is actually the biggest local market. And the market is going on every day, I think, except from Sundays. And all the products you can find here are locust, locally harvested or grown on the island. And it's actually amazing how much uh, different variety you can get here from the island. Even pineapple is growing uh, on Sicily. And many, uh, many food choices or many dishes you can also try immediately on the booth. So behind me, for example, there's a guy. <laughs> Behind me there's a guy who was trying to sell his pulpo, which he's cutting in pieces and with some fresh lemon and olive oil, you can eat it directly. Or uh, a sandwich with fresh intestines or roasted intestines inside. So if you're courageous enough, come here for a culinary tour. Te lo faccio tutte e due, due e cinquanta. No? Troppo. Prego. And it comes here directly from the sky and he has a little wagon and inside is a little place where he can keep it warm and he takes it out, out and spreads the olive oil on top. Let me try it. Mm. It's super crispy. Sicilian street food. Sicilian street food is best. And on top is very fresh tomato mousse. Delicious. Oh, <laughs> 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 
And here you can see two different aubergines. The round aubergine is Tunisian aubergine, which is round. Mm -hmm. And this one, which is darker and uh, elongated, is Sicilian aubergine. Uh, solo piccoli. We are now in the Church of Jesus, which was, uh, or still is, a Jesuit church in uh, Palermo, in Sicily. And this church is so amazing. It has so much richness in decoration. There's a lot of marble cavings and reminds me of the Taj Mahal a little bit in India, because there they are also treating the marble and pu uh, putting flowers inside of the marble from different stone materials. And these cavings, I don't know, you, you think like the, the craftsmen have been taking some drugs during the construction process, but the whole church, all over, everywhere where you look, in every niche, on every pillar, it's just over and over and over decorated, never ends, there's so much to see. You probably can st spend a whole day and still discover new things all the time. Now in the cathedral of Palermo and in the cathedral there's a really interesting feature because one of the cupola on the side has a little hole in the ceiling and at 12 o'clock at noon the light is coming through this cupola through a tiny little hole and illuminates a meridian which is on the floor of the cathedral and now we are uh, in the middle of September so now it's, uh, the star sign is uh, Libra and before it was Virgo. So really cool to have this in the church. And guess who's lying there? We are in the Cathedral of Palermo and that's the tomb of Federico II. If you remember at Castel del Monte, and all the places in Puglia where we were, where Federico II was very prominent, there he's lying. We are now on top of the cathedral or the dome of Palermo and it's really worth the entrance fee. It's five euros, but you have a beautiful view all over the city from here and look at this beautiful city. 
when you think we are the only YouTubers here in Palermo, look at me behind. There's one with a yellow raincoat and oh, even yeah. the dog has a yellow coat. Cannoli. Cannola. Just opposite the cathedral is Chiasetto della Cattedrale. You can have pomegranate drinks and this costs 6 euros. Mm. And everywhere in Palermo you have actually really beautiful palazzos. So from the outside it's not very spectacular or maybe also completely run down and dirty. But from the inside when you enter the through the door you have the most amazing palazzos. For example like this one here with this pine tree. I hope you can see it a little bit. So if you have a chance, uh, Marty is just showing me the name of the palazzo. This is called Palazzo Castrone Giradina di Estonifia. Santa Ninfa. <laughs> Santa Ninfa. So if you have a chance to enter through the entrance door, if it's open to public, definitely go in and have a look at the courtyard. This is Quattro Canti, a popular and famous intersection in Palermo, also very busy in traffic. It has four corners, was designed and built in the 17th century. Four baroque buildings that contain four fountains and it has four statues, each of one representing the four seasons. Spanish kings of Sicily and four patronesses of Palermo, the Cristina, the Ninfa, the Olivia and the Agata. And next to the Quattro Canti is the Fontana Pretoria, which is actually located next to a church. And because the statues here are completely naked, the church found this very inappropriate and renamed this fountain Fountain of Shame. Of course, the church thinks that a human in a natural dress is a shame. We are now in the church of St. Ninfa al Crucifery, and as you can see, it's in a very bad condition. You have to pay one euro entrance fee, but there are many churches like this in Palermo which are very uh, run down, and the, the beautiful paintings are coming down, the ceiling is uh, broken, and water comes through. So it's, it's really sad. Why, why is the Catholic Church maybe not supporting their own buildings? Maybe they have too much of them. Anyway, but this is a, a little bit an experience on the on the other side. We are now in the Teatro Massimo in Palermo, which is actually an opera house, and it's the third biggest opera house in Italy after the Scala and Le Venice. In Venice. <laughs> and Venice. And actually we wanted to try to get opera tickets here because when we were in Buenos Aires and uh, we went, also went into the opera and got for a good price last minute opera tickets in the Teatro Colón, you can watch the video up there. And unfortunately here there is nothing to see at the moment they only have a concert from mozart but that's already sold out so instead we are going to do now a guided tour through the opera house so i have to correct myself this is not uh, the third biggest it is the biggest theater in italy and it's actually the third biggest theater in europe after paris and vienna and the size is 7700 square meters Amazing. So even though this theater is one of the biggest in Europe, the auditorium or the, this room where I am right now is not the biggest one. It's actually quite small, but it has a very good acoustic and the singers don't need to use microphone or when they have performances on the stage. So that was the theater tour. It lasts half an hour, so you can imagine how quickly it goes through the whole theater uh, with a very uh, a little passionate person. Uh, the tour costs eight euros and as I said it lasts half an hour. Unfortunately the theater is quite run down. You can see that it needs urgent renovation and apparently there's a plan to do that. The street food which is prepared right behind me here on this barbecue is actually intestines of lamb and it's filled with spring onions. 
and actually the people in Palermo they really love to eat in distance and so far Palermo is really really surprising beautiful and very very interesting even though if many parts are run down and houses are falling apart and I just wanted to tell you that the all the intestines which are eaten here on the street food has a long history because there was a time when there was a Jewish a very strong Jewish community living here in Palermo and the Jewish people got uh, on top of their salary also very often the intestines and they had different ways of preparing these intestines and those kind of street food uh, things I was just speaking about are leftovers from that area. This beautiful little coffee here in a side street, which is actually our neighborhood and also our neighborhood coffee place, uh, is definitely recommendable because it's a really calm spot in this curly city. You can sit down, they, sometimes they play classical music right now, like right now. Coffee is excellent and also they offer avocado toast. We will add this in our Palermo city guide, which will be appear sooner or later than on our website. On the website, actually, you'll find also more city guides of different destinations and, of course, videos. And now we are heading into another World Heritage or UNESCO World Heritage in Palermo, which reflects very well the mixture of different cultures in the city in the past. So the San Cataldo Church, part of the UNESCO World Heritage, is built actually in a Norman Arabic style. It looks like a mosque, but it's a church and it's been there since the 12th century. Uh, the entrance fee is two euros fifty and next to it is another church which is now closed in which you could go if, you, if it was open but if you come back in two hours when it's open you have to pay another extra euro and this church is part of a circuit which is not the same circuit where we were earlier where we also had to pay five euros to entrance and get access to another circuit so there's a lot of different church circuits here so make sure you choose the right circuit to see the right churches so you don't pay too much money. This was our first day in Palermo and our first take on Sicily. Uh, we really liked the market. We wanted to say something about the Balaro market that it's actually open every day not only on weekdays. And there's another market called market Mercado del Capo, which is also worth a visit. It's smaller than Balaro, but has amazing fish, amazing vegetables, and uh, amazing people selling there and uh, trying to sell very loudly their products. We are back in our Airbnb here in the center of Palermo with this fantastic view. Thank you for watching this first vlog from Palermo. Uh, please subscribe. Keep watching, safe travels always, bye.